So I'm affectionately known as the woman who wants to genetically engineer you. And that sounds kind of crazy. And you might wonder why I would want to do that. I mean, you're perfectly fine people, right? But there's something wrong. And I'm going to tell you about it. It's called biological aging. We're all biologically aging. And you've been told that this is normal. But actually, it's not normal for every species on the planet. Uh, some species have what's called negligent senescence, meaning that they don't really biologically age over time. And we want to create humans that don't biologically age over time. And as a matter of fact, we want to reverse aging, biological aging. We want you to get chronologically older, but not biologically older, OK? So it's a big idea. And actually, the science is already proving that we can do this. We've done this in animals. And my company, BioViva, wants to move it to humans. What do you think of that? <laughs> Does that sound good? So why gene therapy? So I am a proponent of human use of gene therapy. So don't get me wrong in these slides. I want to treat you. I don't want to treat mice. But mice are a great place to start because their short lives actually help us analyze how much sort of lifespan and health we can get out of these type of therapeutics. So this is going to put things into perspective. So here's a field mouse. This guy is living out in your backyard, and his lifespan is about six to eight months. He gets a little slower, and he gets eaten. OK? If you take that same mouse, and you put him in a cage, and you take away predation, this mouse will double its lifespan. Same mouse just gets anything he wants to eat and doesn't have to worry about anyone eating him. If you take that mouse and you put him on calorie restriction, you limit the amount of calories he eats to only exactly what he needs and you exercise him, you can, again, double his lifespan. And as a matter of fact, the mouse on the left is the same age as the mouse on the right. He's just had everything optimized, OK? Enter gene therapy. We change one gene, one gene in the mouse. And as a matter of fact, this is FGF21. This is a gene that humans have. You double that lifespan without changing any of the diet or exercise. <laughs> That's pretty powerful. That's one gene. That's one change. That's a gene that you have, that I have, that mouse has. So how does gene therapy work? ask you, why put your body on the line like this? Well, actually, uh, we believe strongly as a company that companies should take their own medicine. I believe it was the only ethical thing to do. Uh, the telomerase gene therapy is the most promising gene therapy that sat in research for over 20 years. Uh, it appears to reverse um, a myriad of aging biomarkers and would have the most benefit to humans uh, right now. Uh, there was no human body that had had the therapy in it, and essentially we felt that it was worth uh, taking the therapy, getting it into the first human body so that we could experience the first human results, and therefore moving the therapy closer to a cure um, than it would be otherwise. So talk us through some of your most recent results. Right, so in my most recent uh, blood marker results, we saw a reduction in triglycerides, which is indicative of the myostatin inhibitor that I took. Uh, this is uh, uh, an effect that they saw not only in animal studies, that, but they will very likely see in the human uh, studies that are now taking place in the U.S. Uh, for muscular dystrophy. We saw a decrease in C-reactive proteins, and this is a biomarker essentially of inflammation. This increases as you get older, and mine decreased. This would be indicative of the telomerase-inducing uh, gene therapy. We saw an increase in the telomeres. Uh, the telomeres are the re re redundant caps at the ends of your chromosomes that shorten as you get older, and we saw an increase. And um, outside of that, in my MRI images, we saw an increase of muscle mass. And so if you look at what the therapy is doing in the most basic form, you know, this is potentially a way to treat things like diabetes type 2 and uh, biological aging in general. Uh, so these are good indications that these therapies are working at a base level. 
but now what we need to do is to get into human studies and actually prove that they will work over a general population and start treating people who need, are in the highest need now. My name is Liz Parrish, and I'm the CEO of BioViva USA. Last year, I became patient zero to treat my biological aging when I personally took two of BioViva's gene therapies to prove their safety and to catapult us into a new way of thinking about the future of treating disease. The first gene therapy increases muscle mass, which protects against the muscle loss that occurs over time in our aging population. The second gene therapy is to increase the number of healthy cellular divisions and battle stem cell depletion, which limits our cell signaling and leads to disease and death. I feel wonderful, and BioViva is collecting the invaluable data to track my results. We are sowing the seeds of a biotechnology revolution, and these results will be the first fruits of our labor. I believe that in our current risk-adverse society, the prevailing model was unlikely to create new therapeutics and bring them to market in our lifetime, unless a company came forth with the ability to treat patients with no other options and to nurture these technologies into the status of preventative medicine, and thus was born BioViva in 2015. I started BioViva because innovation today moves too slowly and costs too much, and people are dying needlessly waiting for treatments. How will BioViva get the job done? We have two strategies. First is investment. BioViva aims to make gene therapy affordable for everyone. In order to achieve this, BioViva is collaborating with Deep Knowledge Life Sciences, a UK-based investment fund that specializes in cutting-edge biotech. Dmitry Kaminsky, the founding partner of the investment fund, is enthusiastically funding these gene therapies and other nascent technologies and he is an early adopter. Second is getting products safely to market. The current regulatory authorities have uh, an outdated model that does not accommodate these new technologies. That's why BioViva is working with the Global Longevity Initiative, a global consortium of world leaders who will help regulate BioViva to ensure a safe and effective product and allow us to get these products to market. So what is normal? A lot of people tell me that dying of biological aging is normal, but actually for humans, it's not. If we look at how we died in 1665, we actually died of infectious disease, and without medical intervention that we have now, about 90% of us still would. Only 1% of people died of aging. That wouldn't have changed without the intervention of medicine.